Max Handel Saturday, 60 years later. Thursday marks the commemoration of the day when a mob of white men armed with axe handles and bats attacked black demonstrators trying to integrate lunch counters in downtown Jacksonville. The attack left hundreds injured, bleeding and traumatized. Over the next several days leading up to Thursday, News for Jax is telling the stories of some of those who faced danger in the struggle for desegregation. Nat Glover was Florida's first African-American sheriff elected since Reconstruction when Duval County voters supported him overwhelmingly to take the job in 1995. Since then, Glover has been president of his alma mater, Edward Waters College, and points to a defining moment in his life 60 years ago. Kent is joining us with some of Nat Glover's story. Tom and Mary, uh, it can be tough to get President Glover to talk about the details of that day in 1960. What happened to him on Axe Handle Saturday shaped his life and the future of law enforcement in Jacksonville. Nathaniel Glover Jr. is well known and respected following a life of service that included speaking with presidents. I have intentionally saved for last among our panelists, and I want to give uh, the governor a chance to say a word as we close, but uh, uh, the sheriff of Jacksonville, Florida, Nat Glover, because he is uh, one of the most unusual uh, success stories in our country. First in the sheriff's office, starting in 1966, then as the top administrator at Edward Waters College. But I always had this notion that being black, you got to always do more than expected. But all the successes came after the terror of August 27, 1960. Glover worked longer than anyone else that day, and when the 17-year-old left his dishwashing job alone, he walked out into the middle of Axe Handle Saturday in Hemming Park. Can you believe it's been 60 years since that day we're talking about? Yeah, yeah uh, it's hard to believe when I look back because I still can see those faces. He was quickly surrounded, and so he ran to a nearby white police officer. And what he told me was, you, you better get out of here before they kill you. And I took off running, and I ran. I had never been that frightened in all my life. Glover would become a pillar of courage and strength, but he says he owes it to that moment of fear. There was also embarrassment that he had run from a fight instead of standing up for himself or others. He says he still vividly remembers the faces of the men who surrounded him with their axe handles or bats or clubs. It was a hateful mob, and, and it was quite frightening. And um, I just felt like it was going to get worse. Glover says he decided he would not run from the fight again, that he wouldn't let fear stop him from doing the right thing. That meant he ran for sheriff, even when friends told him Florida would never elect a black sheriff and he would be a laughing stock. That also meant he wouldn't hold on to bitterness, including years later when a man approached him and asked for forgiveness. He said he was there that Saturday and he had an axe handle and he said, I just need, emphasize the word need, you to forgive me. And I said, well, if that's all you need, you got it for me. I really forgive you. And um, the whole time he was talking to me, what added legitimacy to that moment was the fact that he was crying and the tears were so apparent, they coming out of both eyes and they kind of met on his chin. So um, he was quite sincere. It was easy for me to say I forgive him because um, that moment has been more of an a asset uh, emotionally than a liability. Nat Glover's now 77 and retired from law enforcement and from leading Edward Waters College. The lesson he says he learned that he would never forget is that if he didn't do something he should have or if he did something that he should not because of fear, he would never forgive himself. 
That lesson led him to a life of public service and making a difference.